Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a third person platformer in Unity and welcome to episode 2. So this time we're going to take a look at some textures, how we can manipulate them inside materials and we'll also look at some prefabs and grouping of items and objects. So firstly, let's create a folder in our project window to actually store some importable assets. And if we're down here, right click, create, folder and let's just call this textures and let's hit enter and go inside that folder you can see textures is now a child object of assets and inside here we're going to drag and drop a couple of textures so I'm going to bring these in here so if I highlight them all drag and drop them straight into unity here it will import pretty much straight away because they're any small textures now, I'll put these on the website where you can download them for free. So if you head over there, downloads and assets, and you can get them there. But one thing to remember is when you're importing them into Unity, you have to remember to unzip them first. It's just one of the little quirks of Unity. that It's not able to import anything from a zipped folder. So these are now called textures, and a texture is basically an image. And the way it works is we can apply these to objects within our scene in a couple of different ways. There is the plain old simple way of dragging and dropping yet again. So if we take floor 001 and drag and drop onto here or in the hierarchy, it will apply it to here. But we'll notice something happen as we do that. So drag and drop. We'll notice a materials folder appears right there. That's one of the great things about Unity, is that if you do something as simple as this, Unity recognises what you're trying to do and automatically creates something for you. Now, if we go to that Materials folder, we can see that Floor 001 has been created as a material. Now, this object itself does not actually have a texture on it. It has a material. Objects in Unity have materials attached, not textures. So it's a sequence of the texture goes onto the material, which goes onto the object, because it's the material that we manipulate on the object. So now we have this material selected, you can see that over here in the inspector panel, we have some options to change how it looks. Now a good example of what we could do here is we could change the metallic look of this texture on the material by sliding it this way. And you'll notice a difference happen right here. Same applies to the smoothness, whichever way you want to go. Remember, hold control, press Z to undo, and that undoes everything we've currently done to about there, maybe. So let's set that back to whatever we originally had it as. So I've gone a bit too far there. Uh, hold control, press Y to kind of redo everything as you would expect in Windows. And if we head back to that, and uh, back to there, we can see that's the original setup we had for the material. Now, I won't explain too much about shaders because they're not quite relevant at this stage in development, but a shader is a way of actually displaying the material itself. Uh, we'll stick with standard for now, but we may change depending on what kind of image we want to present with this cube. So we can also change the color here. So if we turn it a red color, you can see how this affects the kind of overall shading of the cube. Same applies if we go all black, it literally turns the whole thing black. Having the color as white presents the original color, which is on the texture. Now, one thing here, which I will explain before we move further on, is something called normal map. Now, a normal map is a way of kind of showing lumps and bumps on a flat surface but it gives the visual impression that there are lumps and bumps there and one way to work around this is if we go back to our textures folder take the floor 001 hold control and press d and what that does is that duplicates the object that whatever you have selected and the same can apply for everything within the hierarchy or scene so we'll be doing a little bit more of that later on in this tutorial so for now, I'm going to rename, which is auto name to floor 004. So I'm going to press F2. I'm going to call it floor 001 underscore N. 
and that N stands for normal map. So we want to change this now to a normal map and we can do that by making sure we have it selected. Go over to texture type in the inspector panel and change it from default to normal map. I'm going to click apply straight away and we should be able to see that it does change its appearance down here in the texture. I'm not going to explain grayscale in too much detail but we are going to use it. You'll see the idea of what happens. So if we go to our materials and click on the material itself and then head back to our textures folder you'll notice the inspector panel still contains the materials information. So we can drag and drop this normal map onto this little square here for normal map. And you'll notice it does actually change its appearance. And we can see it gives it a little bit more of a 3D looking effect because we've applied this normal map. Now, if we hover our mouse over here, we can actually change how it looks. And you can see the kind of effect it's going for here. It's kind of glossy and we may stick with this glossy look later on in development but for now I am going to show you what it means when we click grayscale. So if we click on the texture again, this normal map one, tick grayscale and then as soon as we click apply you'll notice this cube change again. It gives a more rigid and kind of let's say veiny kind of look to it and once again on the material we can actually change how effective this normal map is by holding the mouse over next normal map and sliding and you can see how much detail this can go into how kind of intricate and veiny as I like to call it it can go so depending on how you want your game to look this is what you would do now remember earlier I said you can hold control and press D to duplicate items well let's do that with this cube now so if we select our cube make sure it's got the orange selection around I'm going to zoom out I'm also now going to hold my middle mouse wheel and pan upwards and you'll notice the hand appears another way of doing that is selecting the hand tool just here and then holding the left mouse button to move around I like to usually stick with this one and holding the middle mouse wheel to do it. It just kind of cuts out the middleman of clicking up here and moving around. So base block 001, let's hold control and press D to duplicate. Let's still hold control and let's pull out on one of the axis. And we can see how these are mixing together. They are seamless now. They look like one object next to each other. Now we can actually take these objects one by one and put them down here to create an asset for them. So if we go to our assets folder here, right click, create, folder, and let's just call this prefabs. And let's go into our prefab folder, select our base block 001, and let's drag it down here into our prefab folder. And you'll notice that this now becomes a default object that which we can use in the game at any point. And it'll also turn it blue up here to represent that the fact that is a prefab rather than a game object. And we can literally drag and drop that straight in. So every time it creates the same object over and over. So let's get rid of those we've just put in. We've put too many in. If we hold our shift button, and select those there, it highlights them all, and we can press delete. Now a prefab also works on the basis that we can create, let's say these two objects to be one object. So if we go to game object, and then click on create empty, then let's right click, rename, and call it double base block. What we can do then is tap, Let's get rid of this original one block prefab and turn this one back to its original block. We could also delete it so we're left with the duplicate but it still doesn't matter because it's still the same object. So let's rename that back to normal. Hold control, press D and let's bring it to there. And now if we click on the duplicate and the original 
we can drag and drop them into this double base block, like so. You'll notice an arrow appears. These have now become child objects, and this is the parent object, meaning this is the most important one. So if we click that arrow and then drag this down here, you'll see it creates a prefab for those two blocks. And we can literally do the same again, almost like that's a single object. So the idea of creating a prefab is quite useful in the long run because it means that you can quickly and easily put things together rather than the whole mechanism of one by one. So we've created a material real easy just by dragging and dropping the texture onto the uh, object itself. So let's create a material from scratch. Firstly, I would actually like to get rid of this normal map as it is because I would prefer it to be just standard rather than from grayscale for now. So let's click apply and they're back to normal. Okay, so let's create a prefab, uh, not a prefab, sorry, a material using the red texture. So if we go to materials, right click, create, and we have a massive list, but all we need is material. And we can name it floor 002. Now the idea of what Unity has done for us in creating the material automatically is just something so simple, strangely enough, because if we have this material selected, go to our textures folder, we can drag and drop this floor 002 onto the albedo right there. And if we go to materials, although it's not updated, it does actually have the material attached to it. So if we, for example, create a new game object, 3D object, cube, let's move it this way, we can attach this onto there. And that's that how it works. So let's create the same principle we have for these ones here. So I'm just going to get rid of that cube because we don't quite need it in the scene, but we do need to duplicate floor 002, hold control, press D. Let's rename it floor 002 underscore N. And then let's change it to a normal map like we did with the blue one. And yet again, you can see it's got a slightly different color because the idea of a normal map, it kind of applies a bluish kind of tint to whatever object we have attached, uh, texture we have attached. So let's take this double base block, hold control, press D on block 001, and let's move it out of the hierarchy. And you'll notice it turns black again because that's not part of this prefab. So this is a way of grouping objects together right here to create that prefab. So let's take base block 001, let's press F2, change it to base block 002. Let's hold control to bring it out to about there. And now let's apply that floor 002 material to this block. And all we need to do is change the normal map to actually contain the normal map we created. And let's have it the same kind of effect that we've got on these ones. So we just need to duplicate whatever we have here. So currently it's set as normal map is nine. So let's set our red normal map as nine. Now you can see it's a little bit darker than what we would actually like. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because that's where we can also play around with the metallic or smoothness. Lighting also comes into play as well which is something that we'll look at in the next episode as well. So the idea of what we've done here is we've started creating the base blocks of our actual game itself. And if we take this prefab, for example, we can drag a base block 002 into there, and that's also its own prefab. And any changes we make, for example, in a material will also affect the prefabs here. So you don't need to worry about having to change the prefabs, then have to change the materials. It's all kind of linked together. So next episode, what we're going to look at is we will quickly build up more of this area here. We'll bring in a player, we'll bring in some music, and we'll also look at some lighting. Now, as I say, lighting is very, very important because it does affect what we have here. But we'll explore what we can in the next episode. So guys, until then, thank you very much for watching.